Hey there, this is Vanessa DeBerlay, and today I'm going to give you three tips on how you can be successful on YouTube or really in any part of your business. These are three tips that anybody can use, whether you're brand new at YouTube or whether you've been around for a long time. These are three things that I find that if I don't focus on, I start to lose my traction, if that makes sense. And I'm going to give you a little bit of story today about 13 raccoons and how they taught me or reminded me of one of these tips. And that's why I'm telling them to you today, whether you're new, whether you've been around for a long time, these are things that we end up doing and, and forgetting about and we lose a little bit of traction, if that makes sense. So let's dive in. Before we dive in, I'm going to take you actually for a walk and we're going to go see our chickens down there because there is a story with these 13 raccoons and chickens for tip number one. But before we do that, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I put out videos twice a week, videos that are going to help you grow your YouTube channel, help you grow your affiliate marketing business using YouTube and all kinds of other tips that will help you in your business. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the notification button. When you hit the notification button you will be notified every Tuesday and Friday morning when I put out a new video and you'll want to be sure to watch it and leave a comment so we're taking a walk to the chicken coop and I'm gonna tell you a story I'll try to keep it short and entertaining but um, over this past couple of weeks um, I had well first of all I had started a new business endeavor I'm we're down here by the chicken coop right now I started a new business endeavor I like to do all kinds of things <laughs> uh, just because I love to think of ideas and ways to make money but I decided I was going to buy 50 chicks and I bought 50 Rhode Island Reds and I was going to grow them and instead of just selling eggs I wanted to start selling chickens and I did pretty well they were two months old and I was getting $15 a piece and by the time they were six five and six months old I was going to increase to $30 because I've done it before well I started I had them in the barn and it was really really hot I mean they need to be at 90 degrees in the beginning but it was stifling like there was no breeze or anything so I started just kind of letting them get out a little bit at a time and they were free ranging all over the place. Actually, there's some right over here free ranging. I don't know if you can see them, see that? So all my chicks were all over the place and I mean, they were very, very, very happy. But I started noticing there were some feathers out here and there and I'm like, oh, that's probably because some of the older ones are molting. I mean, I really was just not paying attention. And before I knew it, I was like, oh no, I'm losing chickens. and. In the end, um, long story short, I ended up finding out there were seven raccoons living in the barn, underneath the barn. Um, so we had to displace them. And then one night I came out here and opened up the coop and there's a big raccoon in there. I had to call my husband to help with that one. And right after that, we find three more babies in there because they were climbing through a, a little tiny hole, two inches by four inches, which had to fix that. Long story short, what did I learn from that? Well, I went from 50 adult hens down to 20 and I still have my 20 because I you know started locking them up at night and I lost all my babies that I had left I had 30 left so some these raccoons had a good good eatings for a couple weeks and 13 of them have been displaced and we'll leave it at, at that but I did go out and get more and they are locked up and I still have my adults so I'm still getting my eggs but what did I learn from that I hope you kind of thinking I got I got complacent I got lazy I, I won't even say lazy I just got comfortable I really got comfortable I hadn't had any raccoons out here probably three or four years um, and in the whole time we've been here eight years I've maybe had three so it wasn't that big of a deal I knew they were out there but they hadn't been coming up here and hurting my chickens so I let them free range they at night they were sleeping wherever they wanted um, and they were laying their eggs where they're supposed to but they're very very happy and what I learned is you have to not get complacent don't get comfortable and I think that if this is true with our business as well I know myself I was even with my channel I was working my tail off in the beginning putting out videos every single day and I noticed when I lowered the amount of videos I was doing I wasn't working as much during the week because my focus all the time was to get the video out and what I want you to get from this is even though you might change the job let's say let's use videos as an example let's say you were putting out four videos a week and you decided to go down to two you have to use that time that you saved to do something else that's productive that's going to help you grow your business and make money in your business it's so easy to get comfortable and complacent and what happens is 
you lose chickens, right? Or, or you're going to lose money. You're going to lose money. Yeah, you'll say, well, I wasn't making that money, so how did I lose it? Well, you're losing money. So don't get complacent. Be, don't get too comfortable. There's always something else you can do. And I'm not saying add time. Just if you take something off your plate, make sure you replace that with something else that's going to help you keep to continue to grow your business. Now, before we go on to tip number two, I'm going to give you a little preview of the chickens. It's only going to be a couple minutes, but you've got to see them. I went out and got 25 more, <laughs> and they have been locked up. Actually, they're at the bottom of the coop and they have a stairway that goes up so they can sleep upstairs, downstairs. Um, but I have 25 blue, what are they called? Blue, um, I had Rhode Island reds and now I have Rhode Island blues. I couldn't remember their name. But I'm going to go show you those and then we'll go on to tip number two. Now they are actually about, oh, they're four weeks old. So they're still young and like I said, they, they come down here, oh, here comes one up here. They're really pretty there. They've got uh, silver, see the silver ones? They look like they're white, but they're silver and they're called Rhode Island Blues. They look like little uh, dinosaurs at this age. They're not really <laughs> as pretty as or cute as they are when they're new, but um, they'll grow into their full form. These are all hens, but there you go. And then there's, there's a, uh, there she is. She's outside there looking at it. So the big ones are not integrated with them yet. Um, eventually they will be integrated, but not yet, but they can see each other. And uh, I don't know if you see that one way in the back climbing up that uh, piece of wood to the left there. If it went up and got a piece of And here's a little stairway they go up to go up into the top part. All right, so there you get to see my new chicks. So that's something I do. And uh, the, the older ones, when they go in at night, they go up here to the top. And they cannot get to the little ones. And during the day, everybody's free ranging. They get to run around. ever been thinking about getting chickens, I highly recommend it. <laughs> so there you go. You get to see my, my chickens. Now last week when I did a video um, for my success secrets, I talked about uh, being present in your life and not being so engrossed with your job that you're not present with your life, if that makes sense. You're, um, I know times, and I've shared this last time, but I'll, I'll do it again quickly, but I remember times when my children were young. You know, I know some of you have your children at home or um, other family members you're taking care of, and it's so hard. And you're also trying to work, and then you're trying to build a business, and, and it's hard. It's very hard. And what you end up doing, what I ended up doing, was sometimes being so engrossed in following my dream that I neglected my present life, if that makes sense. I can remember rushing all the time and, and, and missing out now that I look back. And I highly recommend if you're young and you, you have those children, don't, your business is going to grow. In fact, I was just talking to my son the other day and he's tired of being in the corporate world and he's talking about um, starting an e-commerce business. And that's, that's one of the things he's, he thinks it's going to happen really fast. And I, and I was trying to tell him it's going to happen over time and you app and you don't want to give up your life now with your kids and your wife to make it happen sooner because what have you gained maybe you're sure you might be making five hundred thousand dollars but then you lost something that can't be replaced and that's that's why you don't want to not be in the present now i'm gonna i'm gonna show you how i practice what i preach um right now you can see i'm sharing some videos i had my grandsons out last weekend they were here for five days i literally did nothing with my business i shut down my computer um pretty much except i checked emails um when they were you know winding down at night but basically I had all my videos done ahead of time all my work was ahead and I didn't have to worry about it and that's the part of this business that is so awesome um, but it was very hard to shut down but I thought you know what if I'm telling other people they have to do it I have to follow that as well and I had such a good time with them as you can see with that what is my next tip don't rush through it because <laughs> you're going to say, okay, let's go kids. We're going to go swimming. Oh, wait a minute. We had 30 minutes. Let's get back. Don't rush. Don't rush doing your job. Don't rush through your life. Just let time happen the way it's meant to, right? And use that time during the day and relax. Don't feel like you have to rush because all you're going to do is get yourself stressed out. And again, you're going to be missing out because you're going to be thinking about everything that you need to do, thinking about deadlines and things like that. There's nothing wrong with having deadlines and being organized. I mean, I 100% I have my lists and, I, and, and all that, but the part that we have to control 
is not trying to rush. We want to really enjoy. Um, whether you're working, don't rush. Do your best. Give out quality. And while you're living your life, make it quality. Don't rush through it. So that, to me, tip number two is don't rush. And, and I mean that through your life or through your business because it all will happen when it was meant to happen. All right, and now number three is gonna kind of pull it all together, tip number three. I thought for number three I would talk from the <laughs> four-wheeler since we were just talking about that. But before we go into tip number three, I wanna ask you a question. Go ahead and put it down in the chat, but what are, what are your primary, what's your primary goal that you've made for your business? Like what one primary goal have you made? And then share whether or not you feel like you have been meeting that goal okay so just kind of share and I'm gonna share a goal that I made and I think this is what really helped kick off my business because I don't know if you've noticed um, getting into business for yourself especially online whether you're starting a YouTube channel an e-commerce business no matter what it is there is a lot involved um, I know we start by hearing people say oh you can start an evergreen business, a passive income, and we get excited about that. I know that's what drew me in, and I hear my son now, that's what's drawing him in. And you don't realize there's so many parts, and it's exciting though, and, and if you're like me, you wanna do all of them at once, and you end up trying to dabble into each one so much that nothing's happening. And that's what happened for me in the beginning. So one of the things that i did um, when i started my youtube channel i was following somebody else and they said that every day they made a youtube video and so i decided you know what i need to have content out there and that was one part of my business that i didn't have because i was too busy creating sales funnels and newsletters and all of that i, I worked more on my newsletter than our email marketing part than i did on the, my content and um whether or not that should have came first is beside the point but that's where i was and I remember I made a commitment, a goal, that I was gonna make one video every single day for a year. And one of my goals was to do that. And then of course I understood how to get monetized and all that. So that was my goal, to let all of that happen within a year, and it did. And I know it happened, and this is why. Because one, I made the goal and I was consistent. I was so consistent that that happened every single day or even if i made two in a day it was scheduled out every day before anything else was done and i did become monetized and i did create another stream of income out of it but my point to you is i want you to find that one goal that overrides everything else and make that be like your your star goal and focus on it and be consistent because if you're not consistent and you're jumping from one thing to another it's just not going to happen. And yes, I, I've done that with with the consistency on the on the YouTube video. Now I have another goal I'm making, and then I have to be consistent with that. And and then it goes on from there. And see, when you get really good at that one thing that you made a goal, and it doesn't have to be a year. You could say two months. I'm really going to focus on this part of my business and really get good at it. And maybe at that point you can say, you know what? This is something I don't even enjoy, and maybe you can even hire it out to some, contract it out and let somebody else do it. But I think it's good if you do it yourself first so that you understand what it is you want the other person to do. I think that's vital, and it's great if they come along and they know more than you do. But if you don't understand what you're hiring them for, I don't think you're going to get your money's worth. It, that's just my opinion. But be consistent in whatever it is that you choose. Okay. So there you go. Three tips to help you with your success. Don't be complacent. Number two, take your time. Don't rush through your stuff. Just take your time. Enjoy the process, okay? If you're rushing, you're not enjoying it. And time is going to happen <laughs> whether you're going fast or whether you're going slow. You're going to be more productive and have a higher quality if you take your time and, and do it right. And number three, be consistent in what you're doing. Don't forget, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification button, and I'll see you on the next video.